up everybody it's Jackson and welcome back to the Jackson reaction uh, today I'm gonna actually be breaking down my song great minds think alone just kind of wanted to give you guys the story behind the song and and give you a little bit of information on um, on everything it's the first song I've ever wrote or recorded and it's actually the first instrumental I, I found I went on cinemabeats.com uh, to find an instrumental and and that was the first instrumental I heard and it all came to me like I'd been writing songs forever. Um, next thing you know, I'm writing the whole song. I'm putting it together. I, I know the flow. It just literally it was in my head. I'm recording it, and I never recorded myself in my whole life. And it was pretty cool how it all came together. Um, I was deep in my drug addiction at the time. I found music and found my passion for music. Uh, Maggie and I were going through a pretty pretty rough time at the time where we were both doing our own thing. So she was out you know, out somewhere and I was at home, um, high and I was, uh, recording this in her bathroom. Keep in mind, her bathroom is like the size of a studio apartment. It's huge. Um, but you know, I, the way my music started is I used to write her song poems. I called them out of song titles on Spotify and they would either be artists that she enjoyed and I would find songs that she liked or she didn't know by these artists that she ended up liking or I would find different artists or different songs by other people that I knew that um, by by dating her for a while, I knew what kind of music she liked and I knew she would like it. And so I put a poem together out of all these words and um, just pretty cool because it was like I didn't add any words. It was all song titles that made the poem up and it just it you know introduced us to a lot of new music and was really cool. Um, if you see me looking over here, I got some notes on another computer screen over here that I want to make sure that I... Make make sure that I touch on because this is really important to me, and I want to make sure that I, I you know I, I portray the right message in this and give you the full meaning behind the song. Um, I want to give a shout out real quick to my manager Andrew Glogowski. Uh, he lives in Chicago. I'm in Phoenix, but uh, I met him about 13, 14 years ago at the World Series of Poker when we were both playing uh, poker semi pro or professionally at the time. And also shout out to Louis Cohen at Epidemic Media for uh, helping me produce this badass music video. And also my mixing engineer, Jack London. Um, you know, without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. Uh, we shot the music video at the Westin downtown, also the Found uh, Resort uh, in Phoenix. And one thing that's cool about my videos that you'll see is that this video says, uh, says find yourself and it also says recreate at the end. Uh, my other video, Worst Days, says, um, says let's be better humans and fuck Satan, even though the fuck Satan thing's really fast and you can't really see it. But I like having subliminal messages in my videos that are all about creating positivity um, and being in recovery. That's that's my main focus is, uh, is getting my message out there and sharing my experience, strength, and hope with those still suffering and those um, those that find my music inspirational, inspirational or relatable. Um, so I'm gonna get started on this, and I'll play a little bit, a little bit of the song, and then I'll stop it and explain some stuff, and uh, and go from there. And uh, please smash that subscribe button, like, comment. I would love your feedback on this. If you have any other questions that I didn't uh, address in this breakdown, uh, definitely let me know. If you have anything, anything that you want me to react to in the future, I'm not limited to genre. Um, so definitely hit me up. Um, at my website. It's at the beginning of this, or you can leave it in the comments as well. She 
took my heart, she took my soul. I swear my bitch took everything that made me whole. I want to stop it right there. Um, so what I'm talking about is, uh, you know, I was in a relationship with this woman and we were in a very codependent and toxic relationship that was fueled by, by drug addiction, uh, by meth. Um, she does actually play herself in the video that this is her in the video. Um, it was very important to me to keep this as real as possible. And her and I are still, you know, friends and trying to work things out. So you know, I really wanted her to be in the video and she also wanted to um, play herself as well. So it was something that kind of a unique twist on the whole thing, but it's just something pretty cool. Um, I do want to, to mention that um, there is no drinking in this video at all. We were both uh, sober at the time. Um, it's not actual alcohol in the glasses that we're drinking, just so you are aware. Um, I've had that question quite a bit, so I just wanted to wanted to address that because it is something to me it's recovery music so that's not something that I'm trying to portray right here where I talk about losing myself like you know she had me getting high losing myself barely getting by like what I'm talking about right there is I lost my personality I lost who I was I uh, lost my career. Uh, I was a branch manager at Enterprise Rent-A-Car here in Arizona. You know, I had one of the biggest branches in the state. I was, I was making almost six figures, um, but I was also working 10 to 12 hour days, completely high. You know, I'm, I'm in charge of all these people and accounts and I got an hour drive commute each way and shit. And it just, it, it all came crashing down to a halt. And, uh, you know, when you're high on that drug, you have no fear of consequence and you know, it's just something that was a very harsh, tough lesson for me to learn, but I'm very, very grateful that I learned it and I, you know, I figured it out and that I'm, I am where I am today. I used to be just a regular guy. All I ever wanted was a piece of the pie. Right here where I talk about all I ever wanted was a piece of the pie. It's, it's a triple entendre on a few things. Um, you know, all I ever wanted was a piece of the pie is the money. Um, and then I say, you know, it could mean when I was a kid, uh, when I was younger, I would say in college and stuff, I, you know, I, I hate to use the term man whore, but you know, all I really cared about was women at the time. And so all I ever wanted was a piece of the pie. And then, um, and then also, um, Maggie has a business called Magpie. And so, um, all I ever wanted was a piece of the pie. When I first started writing music, the first four or five songs that I did, I used uh, pie somewhere in the song, just as kind of like a cool hidden, hidden detail in there that uh, that I really enjoyed doing for her. I gave her the best of me. I swear she craved the worst in me. And now, no more killing time. Drowning my addiction one last time. Right here where it says no more killing time. I drown in my addiction one last time. So it doesn't say I'll drown in my addiction one last time. It says drown in my addiction one less time. It's kind of a hard, to, hard to hear that. But um, going back to my song title uh, poem days, the No More Killing Time, there's a song called Killing Time by one of Maggie's favorite artists called City in Color. And then there's a song called Drowning My Addiction by one of her favorite artists, Johnny Craig, uh, when he was in a band called Slaves. So it says, no more killing time, John and my addiction one last time. So those are both song titles of two of her favorite artists that I kind of kind of put in there that you would never know if I didn't tell you that. So the hook. You know, great minds think alone. It's talking about me being alone. I'm not wondering what she's doing, who she's pursuing, and got a fucking clue in. Like, it's talking about, like, I'm alone now. You know, I've moved on. I'm not worrying about her. I don't care who she's with, who she's screwing. That's not my concern anymore. That's kind of where I was going with that. Great minds think alone. I'm not worrying what she's doing, who she's pursuing, and got a fucking clue in. I just want to pause this right here because it's a super fucking cool effect that my producer did. Uh, it's like water reversal thing is coming up. I think it's the coolest fucking thing. And 
And that reminds me of like some saw type shit. The ceiling coming down all weird like that. Um, saying it's a lonely life I've come to find. Talking about, you know, here I am in my drug addiction. I'm all alone. I got no friends. You know, my girlfriend, her and I are messed up. Um, it's just talking about where my headspace was at the time. Let us you and no one else be your shot in mind. I lost most of my friends, let me high and dry. To bleed so deep inside, but no suicide. So I used a play on words there when I say, um, I lost most of my friends, left me high and dry. Um, talking about like when I was in my addiction, I lost a lot of my friends. And, you know, a lot of them I lost, in my opinion, because of the stereotype of the drug. You know, they associated me with this guy all of a sudden that picked themselves or stole things or wanted to vacuum their fucking yard at like three in the morning or some shit. That wasn't me. Okay. When I was high on this drug, all I really cared about was you know, like my obsession uh, with sex and staying up all the time. It was really fucked up. You know, I, I had no sense of sense of consequence or, or perception of like how people perceived me. And um, I know that uh, I wasn't thinking right and I was delusional. And I, I killed a lot of my relationships with not only my friends, but some of my family even. And a lot of those relationships are still not healed or repaired to this day. So it's something that was very hard to go through, but at the same time, it did lead me uh, to my passion, to music. Like my other song, Worst Days, I say sometimes the worst days are the best days of your life. I truly feel like if I didn't go through my addiction and the pain that I endured, I wouldn't have found out this passion that I was supposed to do. And I truly believe that it is my duty to share my experience with, those, with others. And it's my way of giving back and of being of service to other people. Um, and then uh play the rest of the me getting high, losing myself, barely getting by. I used to be just a regular guy. All I ever wanted was a piece of the pie. Yeah. Just to touch on um a couple lines ago too where it says like to bleed so deep inside, but no suicide. I'm very grateful and thankful that I've never been suicidal. Um, I know there's a lot of folks that struggle with mental illness and I'm grateful that, you know, I wasn't, I'm not one of them. Cause if I was, I, I wouldn't be here today going through what I went through. So just glad that I, I had a good head on my shoulders and I made it through and I didn't, uh, didn't give up, I guess. I gave her the best in me. I swear she craved the worst in me. And now no more killing time. Drowning my addiction one last time. There's that subliminal message again, you know, find yourself. Uh, it was kind of like the motto to this video, um, you know, great minds think alone, but at the same time I'm finding myself again, trying to find the old me again. That's the way I meant that. And um, it's just uh, it's just something that I never, ever in my entire life expected to go through. Um, and, uh, you know, I still to this day have trouble saying out loud, like, I'm a meth addict or I was a meth addict. And it's just like, unfortunately, it's my reality, but it's also something that has built me to what I am today. And it's a part of my life. Break my heart, take a long so here um the first time in love so create a size what i'm talking about there is um what we went through on both sides, our friends and family do not like the other. You know, my most of my good friends and my family um, do not like her. Most of her good friends and her family do not like me. Uh, rightfully so. Um, you know, the, the reality is, is we were awful to each other. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that we we overcame the darkness of addiction. And, um, and now we're trying to make this work in recovery. And, 
you know, I don't know if it's going to work, but who, who knows, you know, we're both still um, trying to figure that out. But knowing that we got the darkness and the drug out of the equation where we can actually think clearly and be ourselves again and be the people that fell in love with the other one, you know, when we first started getting together about five years ago, you know, it's something that it definitely is worth pursuing in my mind. And then the other part where it says, she's the most beautiful in the world, even when she cries. I always told her um, pretty much from the get-go, she's the most beautiful girl in the world. And I've always meant it. Um, when I talk about the, the even when she cries part, it's because I did a lot of awful things when I was high and I hurt her. And um, it's kind of a weird fucked upness in that she's, to me, she's the most beautiful girl in the world. But at the same time, I'm making her cry. Um, so that's, that's where I was going with that. So right here, thought it was fate. She would be my wife. Um, I always did. You know, I always thought she was the one. I know that she's the only girl I've ever loved. Um, on top of that, uh, my name, my last name is Pierce. Uh, her business is uh, Magpie. Her first name is Maggie. So if we got married, she'd be Maggie Pierce. So if you took the first three letters of the first and last name, it'd be Magpie. Um, so I always thought like fate was a part of this shit. Um, she, one of her favorite shows is Grey's Anatomy. And um, there's a character on that show named Jackson. And there's also a character named Maggie Pierce. And then they get together. Uh, I think on the old old uh, movie Hook, there's uh, the, the two little kids' names are Jack and Maggie. Just a lot of weird shit, man. That You know, I always look at weird coincidences like that. What I'm talking about there, the day she walked away, she saved my life. Um, is the day she left me for good, um, you know, when we were both deep in our addiction, I mean, it saved my life, you know what I mean? Like, I went to uh, outpatient rehab, I went to sober living for a little bit, uh, I ended up doing a couple months in jail for violating probation, and it's, to me, it's all part of my story, you know, your path is your path, and it's all things that needed to happen in my life to get me where I am today. Um, she also went to rehab, got her shit together, and is working on some things in her life, so I think we both needed that time away from each other and, and away from the comfortability of being fucked up together type of deal, as fucked up as it is. Welcome to codependency. Um, but, you know, we both needed that time away from each other to to figure out our own shit, to see, you know, to kind of, re, you know, maybe even not reconvene in the future, but just to concentrate on ourselves and focus on ourselves before we could even try to try to worry about another person. <laughs> so right there when i talk about um you know at the end i kind of switch things up there just to show show where my head was you know i'm i wasn't really as strong like i was saying like i'm not worried what she's doing i say who was who am i fooling i know i'm worried what she's doing i miss the girl i knew when you know and it's just like a weird thing it's just like kind of brings it all to a head it's like yeah I, I i talked myself into believing that i was strong enough to be without her but then at the same time like you know i needed her and i missed her and i she's all i think about type of thing so you know, I do really uh, appreciate you guys checking this out and I hope you enjoy the, you know, the deeper meaning of my songs because all my songs are real. They're, they're very raw and emotional to me and they're all things that I've lived through. There's no filler there. Um, so I wanted to kind of provide more insight to that so you guys can get to know me on a deeper level than, than just, you know, the, the surface of the lyrics. Um, if there's anything you want me to react to, uh, either for you or for other artists, you know, I'm not limited to any genre. So definitely let me know. I'd be happy to try to accommodate that for you. Uh, again, please subscribe to my channel and uh, and leave any comments. I would love to know what you think. Other than that, um, you know, Friday, I got a, I got a single coming out called Cloud of Smoke uh, with my homie Blind Sight. And that is a that is a meth rap, you know, meth rap recovery track where we talk about uh, talk about uh, being where we were, um, where we are now. And uh, there's even a part there where there's a demon in the track trying to get us to come back to the dark side. So I think you guys will really appreciate that and you'll really enjoy it. 
Uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I appreciate you watching the Jackson Reaction. Take care.